moderator, um, and I'm thrilled to be here with you all. Uh, we will be having a presentation by Maya Wu. I know I didn't say that right, uh, but I did try. And uh, they will be presenting, and they'll let them give you the title of their presentation so I don't mess up more. Um, but I did want to let you know we have Minnie Murr, their advisor and their mentor, here zooming in with us. So I'll be holding up a screen on the slide you see that. Um, and then afterwards, after the presentation, we'll have time for Q&A, so please think about any questions you guys have, any comments or feedback for Maya. Um, and then we will have time um, to invite Philip to do, uh, to do the cord and the sash and play some mini. So thank you guys for being here, and then turn it over to Maya. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maya, and today I will be presenting my thesis. It's about the Court of Consenso of the Ecological Domination of Martinique and its Consequences of Mar on Martinicans. And throughout my thesis, I tried to answer the following questions, which is to what extent did the Court of Consenso affect Martinicans, and what does it, does it suggest about the relationship between the University of Whiteness and the in France? And the main reason why I decided to research about this topic is because I am, I am French, I was born in France, French, but I am also half Martinican, and half of my family is still over there, and they're affected by um, the scandal. So throughout my thesis, I argue that the war in the schedule deeply affected Martinican's health and lands, and reinforced the social hierarchy inherited from the colonial era, and deeply diminished the trust bond between the former colonies and France. And to give you a little overview, uh, I will briefly talk about my method, then give you a little introduction about Martinique and Corrigan, what it is, and then I will give you some historical context and then deep dive into the actual scandal and its consequences. And I post some pictures of Martinique because it's a Caribbean island. I will talk about that. Yeah, beautiful island, right? So, as far as the method, um, I mainly read um, a combination of primary and secondary sources uh, that included uh, governmental reports, research articles, press articles, books. I probably read like over 30, 50 articles or something, like a lot. Uh, I also watched and listened to podcasts about experts on the topic that included scientists, lawyers, politicians, and all that. And I will maybe interview one of the directors of uh, one of the documentaries I watched. I reached out to him. He was on board, but I'm still waiting to be approved uh, by the IRP committee. So we'll see about that. So, um, key information about Martinique. So, it is an Italian island. It's uh, located between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. It's a former colony. It was colonized in 1635, and it became an official French department in 1946. And I point two floods. The official one is the blue uh, with the white snakes. Uh, that's the one the government uses, but it's the one from the colonial era, and most Martinicans prefer the red, green, and black one because it refers to the uh, independent, independentist movement, and yeah, it's just the one people prefer. So now about um, chlordecone, um, it is an insecticide that was used from 1972 to 1993 um, on the banana plantations in Martinique um, to get rid of the banana leaf field, which is an insect that was destroying the crops, and they, um, they use the product mainly because um, Martinique is, is still heavily relying on uh, banana plantations for their economy, because 70% um, of the production uh, is exported in mainland France, and since that insect was destroying the crops, they decided to put that insect to kill it and pretty much save the economy, I would say. Um, but that product is actually very, very um, uh, detrimental to both the environment and people's health. And the government and um, producers knew about the dangers uh, before using the product, and they still decided to use it before, uh, despite the despite the danger. So, um, to give you some historical context, uh, in 1635. 
uh, that's when Martin was colonized, and then in 1642, they started the triangular trade. Um, in 1685, the introduction of the black country into slavery, and then 1848, um, abolition of slavery, and then in 1946, that's when Martin became an official department and an official French department. That means not being a colony anymore, but really being part of France as a whole. Um, and so these key days, they pretty much testify of like, the social hierarchy um, that is still present in Martin today. And so something you should note was that the economy was a very much sugar cane based until the 20th century. And for weather purposes, they, uh, it shifted to a banana economy. And um, the bacon are the real descendant of the colonists. And even today, they still dominate on the island, mainly economically and politically, because they own uh, most of the banana plantations and pretty much own most of the businesses. So it's sort of like a, um, like a contemporary domination that they still have, but it's, it comes from uh, the colonial era. And they also own most of the of the banana plantations. They actually own 52% uh, of the lands, but they only represent 1% of the Martinican population, and they own 20% uh, of uh, Martinique's wealth. So it's they really like, dominate everything. So as of why it is a scandal, um, as I said before, it is a scandal because the government decided to use the product despite its uh, toxicity on the environment and people. Um, and they knew about it and they used it regardless, pretty much because all these, these um, decades, the uh, planners, they gathered into an interest group uh, called Sikelam, and they went to the Ministry of Agriculture and lobbied to get an extension to use the product um, when it was prohibited in mainland France, but I have the technology right after it. it and um, so pretty much these lobbies and the government, they work together um, to use the product um, despite the danger on workers and consumers. And they were all contaminated without even knowing about it. So chronology, so um, the product was discovered in 1951 and commercialized in 19. Uh, 52, uh, 58, and um, in 1968, it was already judged as being dangerous for both humans, animals, animals, and the environment, but they still decided to use it in the Caribbean uh, in 1972, despite uh, the danger again. And um, in 1976, it was banned from the US, um, but a new formula emerged in 1981 uh, under another name. Of Basic, I mean, it was the same product, just another name, obviously. And then um, in 1990, it was banned from mainland France, but as I said before, the lobbies, they worked with the government and managed to get an extension on the use of the product for three more years. Because um, these, these lobbies, like the people who advocated for that, they both own uh, the companies making the actual product and they also own the demand. Like the lens where banana were uh, uh, cultivated, so it was pretty much like making more profit for them uh, on this fight. The then, and then it's only in 1999 that the government started first taking actions, meaning it first started with like water treatment and soil treatment. So, how it works, um, so that is the insect that was destroying the plantations and that's how they would, like how this insect would destroy uh, the tree and it's pretty much a powder that, that they would put on the roots and um, then it would kill the insect from the inside and then eventually it would spread it would like spread uh, through the soils and the water and eventually contaminate both the soils and the water and then uh, animals would contaminate the water and And um, as far as the consequences, so on people's health, or for men, it's mainly prostate cancer. Um, Martin has the second highest prostate cancer rate in the world right now. Uh, the first one is another 
French and Italian island. Uh, the United States focus on art, but it's still like another French department, technically. And on women, it's an adoption and pregnancy perturbator. Um, but you can still be contaminated without developing this disease. You can have it in your blood, but you won't especially have cancer. And then as far as, as of, uh, the environment, water and lands will be contaminated for about 600 years. And it also affected the relationship between the overseas department and uh, many, many friends, because of the point of year. And uh, it's just one example of the difference of treatment of uh, the former colonies and actual friends. And here I just put a graph, uh, it just shows the concentration of product uh, throughout the years. So you can see that around the year um, 2000, 7500, that's when the soils in the water will be cortical free. And I just provided a map uh, in red. Uh, these are the areas of the island that are like, really, really heavily uh, contaminated. So, percentage of Contamination, 92% um, of people, like of actual like, people are contaminated. That doesn't mean that all of them have cancer, obviously, but like 92% have, have the product in their blood. Um, and then 35% of agricultural plants are uh, contaminated as well and need a water and soil treatment. And that, that gives 13% uh, of the whole territory being contaminated. And I mean, it's still small islands, so it's still very significant. So what about it now? So as I said before, it shows a broken relationship between uh, the former colonies and mainland France. It's just one example of the difference of treatment between the actual country and the islands. And it just causes a lack of trust. Uh, to give you an example, like in all the problems, the problems that happen uh, on the island, this topic is just always coming up, even when the protest is not even about that that just always comes up. And um, during COVID, for example, uh, we were supposed to get the vaccine, all of us, and at least in France, and Martinicans would not get the vaccine because they wouldn't trust the government. And it's just one consequence of that. Um, as far as um, alternatives, the government implemented the plan for the uh, It's basically about more, doing more research about the product in its danger, um, treating the water, treating the soils, uh, implementing free blood testing to see if you have any blood or no. Um, it started in 1999 and the last version of it um, um, was introduced in 2021. Um, but it, I mean, it's basically just research and not you know, like real action, I would say. It, it, like, it doesn't involve any uh, improvement of the healthcare system or anything like that. Because I've never lived there and the healthcare system is just not um, on point, I guess. Um, education either, it's not that good, just not on the same level as um, friends. And as far um, of this misinterpretations, um, so there was a court case about that in, in January 2023. Uh, the case was dismissed um, in favor of the government. So it was just like a huge slap in the face for um, Martin Kings in general because I mean, they've been contaminated for years and they just give rights to the government with all these um, bodies. And um, they said that there would be no financial conversation for the victims. And uh, even in 2016, the French president Emmanuel Macron decided uh, had like a whole meeting with all the representatives from the university departments, and he said out loud in front of them, uh, saying that this insecticide uh, causes cancer is a lie. So he said that out loud on TV, and um, for everyone, it was just a huge uh, news. So it definitely still creates a uh, debate. So this is very interesting. Uh, it's just I've heard of um, I know you're interested in graduate school. Is this a kind of project that you would like to continue in graduate school? And if so, how, what kind of changes would you make? What would you look at differently? How would you approach it at, at the next level? So I am interested in going to graduate school. I'm actually fine right now. Uh, and that's definitely a thesis that I would like to uh, continue in 
graduate school, when you know, we like to go to the policy and that's pretty much interesting. I guess I would just like to go more in depth as of uh, the alternatives <coughs> that are now uh, being developed uh, to solve that problem because it's still, it's, I mean, it's done. It's like the source in the water, the water can be regardless. But um, I would like to research more on the alternatives that are available now. I know that now they use a little trap to kill the insect, but I would like to research more about that, and I would like to research more um, on the impact of that specific product on other uh, regions in the world. Because I know it was not the only one, but I decided to focus on that one. But eventually, I would like to research more about that in other regions. Well, thank you so much for the presentation and great insight. I'm well curious. What inspired the research person for the basis as why do you have to research about this? Why did I research about this? Because I'm from there and I saw that my family is affected. Um, I won't get into too much detail as to like how, but I see that it's something that is affecting my family and our identity and our culture as well because all of that like some consequences were like you can't fish anymore but fishing is part of the marketing chemical culture so we had to like change change a lot of habits and it's just something that is affecting us so i feel like it's something i should advocate for because it's touching me yeah thank you Dr. Nichols took my question, but uh, I'm going to do the typical academic thing where I have more of a comment than a question. Um, this was very impressive. There, um, the balancing act between all of the different methodologies, at least from you know, this presentation, um, you're dealing with political comment. Uh, just so you uh, you're using political comment to more or less to a social and um, that is very, very hard balancing act to achieve when it be done so. Um, also, the parallels between this and the which is what the six out of three years, that was the pesticide that was used in Vietnam. Um, if you were to continue this research, what should these angles would you like to uh, pursue it from? More of a bottom up social history, or is this something that you're more interested in the political fallout? Mm, I guess. Like on top of like all the old, like alternative part, I would like to research more on the historical part of it. Uh, you know how I mentioned the big kid, the descendant of the colonists. Um, they still have a lot of power today, but I would like to research more on their power before and like like deep in research on like how they managed to still dominate as much. Thank you all for being here. Let's give my one more. As I mentioned, um, Mitty Murr is the advisor for Maya, and I'm going to see. We'll see if this works. I'm going to see if we can say something about Maya. Or the crowd, let's see. Talk for a lot, and you'll see what happens. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, it's working. Oh, great. Yeah, technology. Um, first, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Barron and Dr. Wolf well, for helping me zoom into my presentation. Um, it, it was really hard when I realized that I wasn't going to be able to be there in person. Um, and I'd like to thank Dr. Nichols for standing in my place and giving me the um, stall. Um, and to Maya, um, I would just say that one of the privileges, the, the really wonderful thing about teaching at a place like St. Edwards at SEU is that we get to watch students develop over the course of their careers with us. Um, and I first met Maya in a sophomore in a religious studies class, and she was impressive then, and it was just continued to grow. Um, and um, I, I admire Maya's curiosity, uh, her extraordinary persistence in, uh, in 
researching this topic, um, digging into ministry files, ministry reports, um, and, and sort of tenacity and persistence. So I really um, encourage, and I, I really want to underline the courage, um, to ask the questions that she has about the structure of the place that she loves dearly, Martinique, as well as France. This is two parts of her her life, and that she's willing to ask these difficult questions about both of them, I think says a lot for her. Um, so I'm, I'm just enormously proud, excellent presentation, um, and congratulations. Oh, let me add. Um, so I said my own as a sophomore, and I remember just being, wow, wow, this person is really a sophomore. I got you, a freshman. In any case, um, I had never became a friend of the girl before. Um, so he can go and get a really good student, and he's doing enough. So anyway, so proud of him.